So we turned this fiesta into a pachanga when we added lime juice, period. And then for dessert, I'ma eat some frozen mango, but for dinner we have rice, which I actually cooked properly today, um, isadora beans, and then some, what is that called again? Uh, frozen vegetables that are cooked, right? Um, carrots, green bean, corn, and um, peas. So yummy. These chips really go off, they go hard, and that's because they're gluten-free. Period, sis. And then, what else? Mm -hmm. Oops, I'm like, wait a minute, let me not show you my notifications. It is still 16 de septiembre. Party time, that's why we're eating Mexican food. Well, actually, I always eat Mexican food because here in the Rio Grande Valley, I mean, that's what we do, right? Period, per. And then, um, that's what we were making the little piñatas for the other day, the little microscopic prism piñatas um, at the library. Excuse me. <laughs> the little prism piñata, so cute. Anyway, um, what was I gonna say? You know, watching videos from New York makes me feel like that's the perfect place for me because I like walking places. And I think like, well, I don't drive, so that's like the perfect place for me, but it's cold. So, dang. Um, but we're getting the week started off right. Um, because I'm doing laundry. I took a effing nap today. Like I really took a nap. Like one of those naps where like, I didn't get like marks on my face or my arms or my back, but you know when you get like the little impressions on your face or back or whatever, um, because the nap was so good. Well, that's what that kind of felt like. Well, I actually woke up and my tongue was a little numb. Anyway, um, have you guys ever slept on top of a pair of wired headphones? It's not a good feeling and it leaves a whole mark on your back or wherever. And then sometimes I think like the headphone, like the actual little headphone piece that goes in your ear has left an impression on my back. Like the part that goes in the ear canal um, or like the outer part of the ear canal because I don't think it really goes in there, in there. But it's like, um, that has left like an impression on my back. Um, wait, so let me see. We're doing laundry. New York, eventually, um, Manhattan might be, you know, my hometown someday. Let's see about that, right. And then, um, uh, Fiesta, the little Fiesta we're having in here, the Bachanga, sorry, because according to Google, a Bachanga is more informal or less formal, I guess you would say. I'm gonna add a little more lime and then I got my mangoes for dessert, my frozen mangoes. I wanted to start off this vlog with like some cool little cinematics, you know what I mean? Something nice and everything. And we still have the chance to do that, but um, I couldn't help but just come on camera right now and pause, chill, sus, no homo. Um, I couldn't help but just like come onto the camera right now. And um, yeah, I have the vlog to edit. Um, and I want to incorporate some of my, so my music. Basically, I want to start um, finishing some of my music so I could put it out because if I enjoy it and I've enjoyed it for the longest time now, I think it's ready for you guys to listen to and I want to do some live performances here for the vlog. So live performances, little lyric video pieces, little like behind the scenes and what some of these songs mean to me and stuff. Um, but I'm gonna continue eating. I'm gonna add some more lime juice. So it's so good. And yeah happy, um, I don't know if you're supposed to say happy 16 de septiembre or how we celebrate that or how we say that, but it is Mexico's Independence Day from what I understand, so I guess that is a celebratory day that we celebrate and we could say like happy Independence Day, right? Or happy 16 de septiembre. The only reason why I stop and say like, I don't know if we're supposed to say that is because like, I'm sure a lot of people made a lot of sacrifices to make Independence Day for Mexico happen. So I don't know if it's a day that is like memorialized and that we think about, or it's a day that is like celebrated. But I remember back in fourth grade when everyone brought food on that day. Um, so it was a weekday, I guess, or maybe, mm, I think it was Jesse says de septiembre that day. Like I didn't, I don't think we celebrated it earlier on an earlier day or a later day, but I remember 
Um, taking food, because each and every one of us took food. By the way, my nose, like, it's running right now. I'm leaking boogers. I could feel it on the tip of my nose. Um, so basically, we all took, like, a dish of our own, each and every one of the students, right? And we all shared food. It was so awesome. Like, literally, it was all of us, literally. Everyone in the fourth grade hall, all of us. Fourth and fifth grade hall, I think. And um, my teacher was Mrs. Casillas. And she was my writing teacher who taught me a lot about um, about writing, honestly. We had, I think it was called EOL, English Oral Language, right? That's what we learned in her class and a lot about writing. I have beans in my teeth, I could feel it, or something in my teeth. Um, and then after, I remember going to my grandma Stella's home and being in the room. Um, she didn't have tile in her room because she, she was going to get it redone. And I don't know why she didn't get it redone, but there was no tile. It was always fresh in there. I think I had taken a shower there and I had to use a towel that was like from a uh, border fest. No, wait. Mm -mm. I guess maybe. No, I'm thinking of a different border fest. The border fest, it was like Jamaican inspired one year, like in 2008 or something. And so... It was probably a 2004 Border Fest towel, or maybe it was an H-E-B Buddy towel, like an H-E Buddy or H-E-B Buddy towel. I think it was called H-E Buddy, but it's like, just to clarify, like it's from H-E-B. You know what I mean? For y'all who don't know what H-E-B Buddy is, um, I wonder if they still have him. He's like a, he's like a grocery bag, like a brown grocery bag with like carrots and celery coming out of him. Trust me cute I that might sound crazy but it's, it, he's cute and he's like a cartoon character type guy right and it could have been those towels actually but I think I I had to take a shower there at my grandma's house and I had to use one of the towels that was in the room I think she was watching either Laura or Caso Cerrado I don't know but we watched that all the time was it Doce Corazones on TV I don't even know but we would see that and she would be chilling on her bed and this is another story but in 2007 that's like the first time I ever saw the Kardashians on TV um I was at my grandma's house my grandma Stella's house and we used to watch well she wouldn't watch the girls next door but I would watch the girls next door I don't know if I would have to like kind of sneak it or what because it was kind of like inappropriate but I would watch TV, you know what I mean? I wanted to watch everything. And so I would watch The Girls Next Door and I, I was like, hmm. Because it was on E. And it was the Kardashians. And I was like, how do you even say that? And another thing is like, I probably didn't even want to watch that. I probably wanted to watch The Girls Next Door. Like legit, you know? Um, but yeah, that's how I, how I came to know um, that brand, that family of entertainers um they basically have a glorified vlog you know because they play their stuff on hulu um it's like a vlog right so keep up with me brandon aqua b-r-a-n-d-n-a-q-u-a -A -A per okay let me continue eating and yes i gotta add more lime to make this fiesta a pachanga so we're making it less formal, we're making it more fun, and Lime just brings that party. She brings the juice to the party. rain today I asked Siri and she was like I think it's raining right now but that was earlier um I'm on my like millionth revision of my song called one big pleasant surprise it's kind of like the beginning of the song is a little less comforting right now um I think that's kind of like good in describing like how confused someone can feel when they don't feel loved and then like the lyrics and everything takes takes the person who's listening on a journey where they 
find love because it's called one big pleasant surprise and it talks about uh one of the lyrics that i have is um to find myself because i got lost i'm talking about like being a confused person and and you find um that like all the things that you like the little ups and downs and whatnot even something as mundane as you getting a a little cold and going to the store um to buy like vix um kleenex <laughs> not sponsored um but like all those little things like it put you in the perfect place to like meet the person who's perfect for you um, all the times that you were waiting in line at a store or like waiting in line at a restaurant and just being like, can you hurry up type vibes, you were actually setting yourself up for success that you didn't even know because you would eventually like decision after decision compounded to where it led you to the perfect person that like loves you so much and you love them so much. Sometimes we think like, all those little moments mean nothing, but sometimes they put us in positions where we make decisions and then we, not me being distracted, um, cause I hear music in the background, but uh, basically, you know, I never knew that I would come back to school. And honestly, that was a game changer. And I met so many people that I wouldn't know now if I hadn't come back to school, but I had to fail in some ways in order for me to even want to come back to school like the pandemic happened and there were no performance venues had i had been had i been successful in my music career i wouldn't have met some of the people that bring me so much love and joy this to this day um and so for me like meeting them was worth it was more valuable for me to meet some of these people than it was for me to be successful in my music career. Like, for real. I believe that, 100%. And now I can be successful in my music career because I feel like part of meeting some of these people was like, it was meant to be, you know? And now I feel like I, like a genuine feeling of like, I can be successful now. I can, I can pursue my dreams and have people to, to look to back home or with me if if I'm able to take everyone with me um, who like contribute so much to my life or however because everyone has dreams and visions of their own and not everyone wants to just like tag along for stuff right but if I'm able to like look back home and say those are my people you know finally I have a group of people like I'm, I'm not just like um, by myself with like my family um, which that's a blessing to have family but like, I was kind of just like a loner in a way because I had dreams and visions of my future that I couldn't really talk to anyone in my family about it in depth with feeling comfortable and the schemery and shenanigans. I just had to like sugarcoat it to be like family appropriate. And I don't know what I'm going on about because most of the stuff I talk about is like family appropriate kind of, um, but like, there's nothing like having peers you can talk to about your dreams and visions um because like your parents they're older than you they're your your siblings they're on their own thing um your grandparents they're older than you too you know um like i find cousins very fun to talk to but then sometimes you reach the like you don't want to talk about some things with your family you're more like comfortable some things you're just comfortable talking about with your family and then other things you just like i'll poke my nose in front of my family you know what i mean like um me and my cousins have literally farted in front of each other like that's how comfortable we are but um like some things are just off limits, you know, to talk to family about, and then you just feel more comfortable talking to your friends about it, you know? So having friends has given me a whole nother level of like something deep to appreciate. And um, now I feel like that I, now that I've met all these people, I'm like, oh, I could be successful now. Um, but honestly, if my career would have succeeded, would I have like, an emptiness in my heart, you know? Um, now I don't feel like I would have that emptiness because um, 
I have people to say like, those are my people, shout out to them, you know what I mean? That's like so good. So yeah, this song is kind of like descriptive of that. Like um, one big pleasant surprise, like you you do all these things and you, you go and you do the laundry, you go and you take the mail or you pick up the mail, you go and you go to the grocery store and all these little mundane, um, very like, like, oh, whatever type uh, events, they compound for you to be like in the perfect place at the perfect time with the perfect person. And they're meant for you and you're meant for them. And it's like I say in my song called Thank You, where I say, God made me for you and you for I, and that's why through the good and the bad, no, I must thank you. So when I say no in that context, it's K-N-O-W like, you must know that I must thank you type thing. Anyway, I'm gonna continue working on this. It's really meta to talk about um, my vlog in my vlog, but really that's what I did today. That's why my voice sounds all weird right now because I'm all quiet and whatnot because I've just been on the computer all day editing and it really paid off to go outside and take some test footage. It was just about to be sunset, like like sundown, you know what I mean? It was about to be sundown AF. So I was like, oh my gosh, let me go throw the trash and let me go outside and take some test footage because that's where we had the, the problem with the color banding on the prior clips, I mean, on the prior vlog. Um, that I just uploaded today for week three of school. We got some like banding, color banding on the clips of the of the sky and I was like, you know what? <clears throat> I want it to look nice and I want it to look good. And so I have to go take test footage, see if maybe it's cause I'm filming in MP4 or um, like if filming in MOV would make a difference. Turns out if I export it as, let me double check. Um, 10-bit HEVC, uh, 10-bit MP4, uncompressed, then we're good and we don't have any banding. So that pays off. That's going to pay off because last week, um, I made the change of like my color profile, setting it to standard. That was an aesthetic shift that we had. Um, and then, you know, honestly, I didn't see as much, I didn't even see banding maybe in a very few instances, but I didn't even see banding on the first couple of vlogs until just this week three of school vlog that I uploaded, but it's pr it probably has to do with like a greater amount of contrast from the standard uh, profile, um, color profile. So um, yeah, we made that change. Um, sometimes we're using manual and sometimes we're using, auto, uh, not auto, aperture priority. And then, um, now we're gonna be, we're gonna still film in M MP4, so we don't have to film in MOV for like the banding to go away. We're still good in MP4. Good thing I like compared them side by side and took clips in MP4 and MOV. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna be able to actually film in MP4, but just export uncompressed um, 10 bit and we'll be fine. So yeah. But you guys might be wondering, like, why are you talking about this nerd activity stuff? Um, and it's because, first off, I am a nerd and I love tech and I love filmmaking. This is essentially filmmaking, right? Kind of like documentary filmmaking. Um, and I just want you guys to learn stuff about this too, because I mean, I started my creative journey as a photographer um, in 2013. So I want you guys to like, if you're interested in this, like, um, be able to like film and stuff, you know, and, and I would want you guys to film in the best quality and I want to film in the best quality. So if I see banding, I'm going to be like, no, like I want it to be better for y'all. You know what I mean? I want it to be nicer. And, um, the truth is like, uh, this stuff is like what I do, you know, I'm on the computer and I'm editing 
and um, on the computer making music too. So although it's not the most glamorous thing and it is kind of boring sometimes, it's the truth of my life because as a creative, we put in a lot of work behind the scenes to make it look like effortless and glamorous. But in reality, it's a lot of like brain work, you know, like your, your mind is, um, your mind is the most powerful computer that you have. So really take care of your mind. You know what I mean? Um, consume good things, good quality content, kind content, enlightening, inspiring, beautiful content. You know what I mean? Um, learn good things, talk to good people, be around fun vibes, laugh, be happy. You know, today I was all rigid and everything and just so serious and, and editing my vlog and then, um, you know, figuring out like the the banding situation because I mean it's a it's a long vlog, you know, and so I'm thinking, oh dang, like it's such a long vlog, we can't export it again. Plus, I had already exported the pieces like three parts, you know what I mean, and then we're running a second export from there, you know, to merge those three parts of the vlog. So now I know ten bit right, um, we're in the clear, but um that's a good thing and we're still learning about the camera and it paid off again sometimes we could think like we'll just feel defeated and be like oh well i guess it is the way it is no it's important to ask questions it's important to try things and and do things um so that you could see like what is the best quality you're not being like you're not asking for too much you're you're asking for the best quality for yourself and other people like this is the coolest archival footage ever for my documentary one day when i'm super duper famous and whatnot you know what i mean um and you know instead of thinking of this as like footage for a documentary i just gotta think of it as this is a documentary this is a fun lifestyle vlog and you know what i mean um and sometimes I do feel the pressure to be like, oh, I, I feel like I want it to be fun and cool and entertaining. And yes, we'll have those moments, but it's also important for me to be honest and authentic and truthful. And if I'm editing all day and we're not doing anything like exciting, you might say, I still want to like talk to you guys um, and continue to show you guys literally what I do, you know? So yeah, I'm cooking right now and I have my timer set. Hey Siri, how much time is left on the timer? The timer has about eight minutes to go. Okay, I wanted to order Chipotle so bad, but today I'm gonna be eating rice and veggies and some beans. Today I bit my the side of my mouth so hard. Um, I did that yesterday and I guess it swelled up a little bit and I did it again today a couple times and I was like, ugh. So I'm gonna definitely eat a little bit slower and just enjoy my food and relax because I gotta relax sometimes, you know? And then, oh, I just like, kind of like almost bit on myself again. Um, by accident. Just by moving my mouth like that. It's because my wisdom teeth, they're crazy. They're in the back and they hurt and they shifted bad. So bad. Yeah, I sounded like an effing goat or a lamb. Um, okay, Mariah fans, because uh, they're called the lambs. I don't even know what that stands for. What does that even stand for? But, um, okay, talk to you guys in a bit. It's Monday. I have... 42 minutes to get ready and get to class, so I'm still good. If I get ready quickly. Today the vibes are this, this, and then the kitty face nose thing with pink eyeshadow makeup, which today I'm not feeling it, but guess what? You want to be seen or heard? You want to promote the vlog? I want to promote my music? I want to crowdsource attention gradually so that I don't have to um, scream what I say. I could just whisper and people could listen when I have a message of importance. Well then, gotta do what we gotta do. Ooh, if I wore sandals to school, I would wear my sandals, my pink sandals. Oh my gosh, to go with the outfit. Um, imagine this shoe and this sandal. Uh, 
So I didn't do the kitty face thing after all, and no, I didn't hit a terror barrier. I just felt more comfortable like this than if I would have done the thing. Um, just because I felt pretty, you get me? And I was thinking of it like, do I characterize myself as like handsome or pretty? Like, what did I feel? No, but I felt pretty. And um, I wore a little bit of the, like the glitter makeup stuff. Um, with the primer on this little discount palette I was able to get at Walmart. It's the one I've been wearing over the past couple weeks. And it's like really like, it's a really sticky primer. And it uh, overwhelms most of the pan. Literally there's like very little glitter in the actual product. It's like glitter on top and then primer. And then like maybe a speck of glitter toward the bottom or whatever. So it's really sticky. And honestly, I don't know if that's bad like when it comes to like getting like heat exposure cuz it does feel like really really sticky, you know what I mean? Um but yeah, my priority today is not to shave. Ah, that scared me. A bird flew like really close. Um the my priority is not to shave my peach fuzz mustache today. Um because that would usually be the priority. No, the priority is getting the class on time. And I think we're on route to being on time. Let me check. I have eight minutes. So F yeah, I'm gonna be on time. Because I've been getting chronically late, literally five minutes late to class every day. Not even lying, every class. Okay, only the morning classes, not the, not the afternoon classes. Technically it's afternoon, but like my earlier classes I get late too. And then my other classes I'm just like, you know, I get there early or whatever. But um, if I had a crush in my class, now that would be different. I would be getting there early every day. You know what I mean? That's the power of having crushes at school because then you like fall in love with someone and you want to be there all early and stuff and you always want to get to class. For me, in these classes, I'm just like, eh. you know, like, not, not, uh, not intensely enthused to get to class early, you know what I mean? I got to class on time today. Here you go. So what did I say about being seen and being heard and being felt? Well, I really think that even though that would be beneficial to be seen, felt, or heard or whatever, um, I think before you need to, before you prioritize other people seeing you, I think it's important to prioritize seeing yourself as your most authentic self. So while on some days I might feel really good and be like, you know what, let me do the little kitty face thing, get a little attention. If I don't feel that's appropriate today, then that's fine. And it's not a terror, terror barrier thing where I'm like, oh, I don't wanna wear that because I'm embarrassed or whatever. It truthfully is the thing of like, I feel like I look nice today, just like this, you know what I mean? With a little glitter, it's very simple. And then, you know, sometimes the little stuff on my nose and the whiskers, it's just like noisy, you know? Especially because, you know, in the past, I have done it with a glitter primer from NYX and then a glitter from NYX. And this time I've been doing it with a brow product, the same product I use for my brows. So it goes on as a dark little nose instead of a glittery little nose. But I definitely want to do it again with like a lime green. I want to do a lime green nose with, of course, the little whiskers that are like, uh, they're going to be black whiskers because I draw them with the, the brow product. And then for the eyeshadow stuff, I, I really don't do eyeshadow. It's really just a glitter primer, but I want to get my NYX glitter primer again and um, do like, mm, maybe I don't have to pack it on so deep, but I want to do a yellow glitter on the eyes. Voice over Brandon here. If the audio sounds weird, it's because we're removing the copywritten music. Empty. So I'm going to have to go to the other store to get what I want in the, in the union. This water is that girl, and you know what? This water is that girl. Not only that, but 
it's not cold, so it doesn't like get condensation on everything, which I prefer. The icon himself, Cinder Boy, is over here. So, did anyone alter the drawing? I hope not. They should literally preserve him here forever. I think he might be overexposed, but. Okay. Uh, is he overexposed? Oh, no. Yes, here I am. Okay. Let me expose him properly. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this is my baby. This is my baby for you. I, did, I thought it was you. But yeah, this is my baby. I drew him and then he got rained on, so I had to redraw on him earlier. But yeah, my baby. I found him over there and I adopted him. So I brought him over here and now people just left him here. So yeah. <laughs> okay, but did you give him a uh, name Renato, though? When I had a present oh, for shit, I guess you can call him Rocky or Cindy. Okay, because the other day I, I put him in the vlog and I called him Cinder Boy. You can call him Cinder Boy. Bruh. <laughs> well, we met Cinder Boy's creator, you know. Um, and I believe him. I, I have met that guy before. I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Shout out to you. I will remember your name. Um, but I forgot his name. But the thing is, the timing is interesting because I was like, who made Cinder Boy? Like, who did this? Cinder Boy's a national treasure, you know what I mean? And then we found the originator of him. And the lighting is so crazy, so we're probably, we're probably gonna have to go back and do Cinder Boy justice by like filming him again because the lighting is literally so crazy right now. Especially under the trees, like you get like one uh, patch of light and then the tree shadows are like, you know, eclipsing everything else. But, um, yeah, you guys, we gotta, we gotta have Cinder Boy preserved because he's a landmark here. And by the way, look at the outfit. I'm wearing all pink today, well, except the shoes. And I'm gonna get that little, it's like a cashew thing at the store here. Um, the Lara bar, right? And I'm also figuring out my work situation. I hit up uh, Anna, and I'm gonna see if I could do some remote work for her, cause she's in LA. So let's see if I can uh, do some remote work for her. Um, cause she has a lot of content to film, and I have a computer to edit, thankfully. So let's see what's up, business-wise. So the lines be colossal, boo. They be colossal over there in the convenience store. And then, um, over here in the Union, there is literally nowhere to sit. I'm gonna find somewhere to sit. I'm manifesting it. Like, it's gonna happen. Um, I'm gonna find somewhere to sit. It might take me a while, but I, my assumption is like, if everyone is in line, then there must be seats available. But I'm wrong. And then, uh, another, to top it off, there are some people that, I guess they're maybe saving seats for friends, but then some people, I am assuming, they're just sitting by themselves. And I kind of don't want to disrupt their their thing, you know? Like, their solo sitting vibes. So, I'm really not going to, like, approach people and be like, can I sit with you, you know? I kind of give up. I mean, I don't want to, like, I'm fine with looking like a seat-searching fiend, you know, just, like, overseeing the whole entire uh, union so that I can find somewhere to sit. I'm kind of fine with it, but, like, nah, I don't even have, like, something to eat, so, you know, I'll find that first, and then after that, I'll find somewhere to sit. Dang, I look good. Oh, my gosh. I have been defeated. Let me get in line. Let me be humble. <laughs> let me be, um, let me admit defeat and let me get what I need and get in line. You know what I mean? Okay, cashew cookie. Okay. This is that girl. The peanut butter chocolate one is so good too. She's that girl. I'm a get boat. I already have water. Dang, wait. That has a lot of sugar. Mm. Mm. They're both that girl, but this one, like, having both of them, that's like a lot of sugar, you know what I mean? I think I'll just get this one for now, and I'll get uh, another thing. Okay. 
four sixty three. I think that's what it costed, and it's worth it. You know what I mean? This is worth it. Mixed nuts, salted mixed nuts, and it has um almonds, cashews, pecans, hazelnuts, and pistachios. Oh my gosh, the hazelnuts are literally so delicious. Um, and then I got this Lara Bar cashew cookie thing. So good, also. But I will say four sixty whatever, and then the three dollars and fifty cents I spent on the water over there. It's like, bro, might as well have DoorDash or uh, Instacarted stuff already. You know what I mean? That's like Instacart. Yeah. Who said that? Okay. Wait. <laughs> Tell me. What is your message of the day? Love yourself. Okay. FPGM. FPGM. Okay. You want to say what that stands uh, for? I know what it stands for, but you got to tell the vlog. Tell the fuck bitches make money. Okay, period. Do you have a message? <laughs> it? Do you want to come out? No? Just okay. Fuck bitches get money. Girls ain't shit. Focus on yourself. Focus on work, school. Focus on yourself. Okay. That's it. Thank you, guys. At this point, might as well have Instacarted, DoorDashed, everything that I wanted, uh, Chipotle and whatnot, because that that did add up. We spent around ten dollars right now on just little knickknack snacks. You know what I mean? But honestly, this is good, and the hazelnuts they taste really, really good. Um, I'm still over here, a seat searching fiend in the Union. I don't think I'm gonna find a seat, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sit at like the middle area where like the the little the little like couch like things are or whatever and enjoy these snacks. Everyone's talking about how they're gonna go to bed. I know you're in the call and speak in one of the like that. I'm out here eating nuts and the side of my mouth hurts with a vengeance. I don't know if I already told you guys, but I bit on the side of my mouth the other day and then yesterday. I did it more. And it hurts. Actually, it's a chill vibe. It's better. It's better than yesterday. We, we right now, we're having problems. This is that girl. Literally, it's so good. She's that girl. Lara Bar cashew cookie. So I'm gonna go pee. Urination nation. Period. So there's not a napkin in sight, and I can't use the restroom if there's not napkins, because then how am I gonna escape the restroom when I need to get out? How am I gonna get out? How am I gonna get out if I don't have a napkin to touch the door? Girl? Anyway, I should ask. I should ask. Cinder Boy! Am I showing Cinder Boy correctly? Yes, I am. I'm gonna go to class. We love you, Cinder Boy. You're the goat. Period. Per. Oh my gosh, I think I got myself out of focus. Per. I better get to class on time because I have one job. Um, I have nine minutes to get to class, but I walk into the restroom and it was like, it smelled like an ocean in there, literally. And the, the flush thing was like on a repeat. I was like, oh, F no. Like the mist is probably entering the air catastrophically anyway I'm gonna go and find a way to pee and be on time to class again I have one job to get to class early not even early I don't even have to get to class early I just have to get there on time honestly I should probably stop filming before walking downstairs um, but yeah I have like eight minutes to get to class and I still need a pee, so I'm gonna go downstairs. So, I finally went to go pee, and I peed downstairs, not upstairs, but when I went upstairs, um, someone had opened the door for me and a group of other people, and I just wanna say, remember your basic manners, y'all, because the door doesn't open itself, honey. If someone opens the door for you, tell them thank you. And honestly, I feel like that's their moment to do good, and it's also your moment to say thank you, right? Um, but sometimes, like, all they need, like, should they want, like, the recognition of it? Who knows, and who cares? Who cares if it's not supposed to be this way? Who cares if they're just supposed to do this out of, their, out of the kindness of their own heart? But, you know, when you do say thank you to them, 
acknowledging that gesture, I think it is affirming to them of something good. So do that. Say thank you again because, honey, the door don't open itself, boo. You know what I mean? Anyway, am I on time to class or not? Nah? Let's check. I have one minute before class. So I'm on time. Period. Her. Squirrel preciousness. Cute. Okay. I don't like the squirrel looking at me like that. I come to film on your land, squirrel. So I went to class and cringefully I asked my teacher if she was Mexican. She's European, right? But she made like a interesting comment about like uh, that she would certainly know all of us or something like that. And she meant it like as a joke. But for some reason, I was like, wait a minute, are you Mexican? And I just decided to ask her, you know, I thought it was a fine question. Because usually you don't talk about like race or ethnicity, right? But I felt comfortable to ask her that. And um, everyone was laughing and I'm like, oh, dang, I actually meant it. I actually meant it as a genuine question. Okay, so I'm not going to go home right now. It's way too hot. Well, honestly, today might be a cooler day. Let me see, is the squirrel still looking at me? Oh my gosh, the little squirrel's over here scratching himself and whatnot. Um, so basically, earlier in the vlog, I was talking about NPCs. Um, the reason why is because in week three of school, I was talking about how um, I was watching these videos from New York City from the early 2000s and from 1987, right? And in these videos, these people are making little comments and, and whatnot that they may, maybe never thought anyone would ever hear again or repeat because they barely even knew they were being filmed. Like, uh, someone was just recording with a uh, little VHS camcorder. And so they didn't really know they were being filmed. And I was thinking, okay, if I were a time traveler, how would I get the attention of these people, right? How would I be able to tell them messages or, you know, give give a message or be noticed? And it's kind of interesting because I was watching the VMAs from the 2000s um, just the other day also. And it's kind of like, if you want to be... Um, leave an impression energetically and have the vibration of your voice or your image continue to ring on for a long time you got to be noticed you know you got to be seen heard um tasted touched felt uh smelled i don't know if you're into that i don't know but um basically um i want to cut the the beginning of the vlog and um, the reason why I want to do that is because the vlog is running way too long um, and I want to make sure that we're exporting at a high quality. So I was talking about my grandma Stella and basically the reason why I was talking about her was because it's like um, I often say like I want to be that girl like I'm that girl this is that girl like you know what I mean and I just want to express like um, people say like break the simulation um, like be known, like uh, be the main character, don't be an NPC, a non-playable character, right? Like you want to be the main character. And for me, it's like, I want to be that girl, right? Okay, now I just want to say how realistic that is in, in some cases or how unrealistic that is. And that's not to downplay anyone's achievements or to be like, bash, like bashing, like I don't want to bash anyone. Um, that's not the goal. The goal is to uplift, inspire, entertain each other, right? But I just want to tell you guys, like, my grandma, to me, she was that woman. Was she that girl to the people? Maybe not. And let me tell you why. Oh my gosh, this tree is full of squirrels. I see three of them. It's an infestation. Uh, just kidding. Um, let me tell you why maybe she wasn't able to be that girl to the people but she was able to be that woman to me. Um, the reason why I say that is because it's like, if you're in your middle ages, you're, you're in your middle age era, right? You're in your 40s or 50s. And this is not to shame anyone, this is to like, I wanna, I wanna empathize with people and I want to like talk about how, how interesting this is. Um, and you have a family, you're, you're 40 or 50, you have a family and you have bills to pay and you have things to do. Um, maybe you're not making the healthiest choices or, or whatever, um, but you gotta work. You gotta be a nine to five girly, even if you don't want to, because you are 
more willing you're 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 willing to give up like a lot of your time and your energy and your resources so that your family can be good and so that you could be responsible and pay bills that is completely realistic you know what i mean um people in this world they have to pay bills so i am not going to tolerate the slander of people being like oh well that person works in nine to five so they're an npc no i wouldn't say that i wouldn't even say that like even if they want to be heard seen or felt some people don't have a choice um having a family is a choice to a certain extent but a lot of people are also pressured into having families by their partners by their overbearing partners especially back in those days you know what i mean where like women didn't have a lot of uh control or like uh you know autonomy of how they would deal with like their their family life and that type of situation and i think that my grandma was really proud of having a family and i'm thankful for that and she paved the way for me to be who i am today but while i can be like oh i don't want to work um let me do photography videography um editing uh even at times makeup related stuff or like social media when i can be like oh i want to be a social media influencer the reality is that a lot of people that came before us didn't have those privileges right so i will not tolerate people saying like that some of the things that our families do um is npc like because they work nine to fives um most of them do that because they need to you know and i remember telling my parents when i was younger that i didn't want to be a loser and work at a call center like them and guess what when i did work at teleperformance i learned that um those are the people that supported me the most they were the kindest to me um it's hard work it's not this easy little job that is like requires no skill set or whatever you have to be brave um to a certain extent to be on the phone and i don't want to tell you guys like like that it's impossible like i don't want to say like you need so much bravery that this is a really hard job and it's impossible no you can achieve it and you can do it but a lot of people didn't get through training and that is that is a testament to um that this job is actually effort you know what i mean and a lot of the people respected me a lot and i admired them from the deepest part of my heart you know what i mean so yeah my grandma um she did do like hair work when she was uh younger she was like she was really proud of um uh working at a beauty salon and doing that and having clients right and um so she did kind of like try to do like the untraditional path of like work and what not um and she did have clients i don't know if it was for cut or color or what it was but she did have clients and um yeah but anyway um okay so i saw someone that i know and now the subject has changed cuz it gave me a little anxiety i'm going to go eat uh but basically if if my grandma couldn't be that girl to the public she was still that woman to me and not everyone who chooses to do like uh like a 9 to 5 job is an npc a lot of those people um maybe they would opt into a lifestyle where they're noticed and recognized and seen by everyone but they're actually focused on providing for their family so um respect to all of them and have a little empathy when we're talking about people we cannot just be like oh this person is an npc because blah 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 like they're fitting into the norm and the standards and whatever a lot of these people are providing for their families and they don't have a choice um you know uh because like you got to maintain a certain way sometimes to be an entertainer you got to be like this is a something like that is kind of like um there are privileges given to people who are like young and people who are given like the like opportunities when they're like beautiful and in big cities and everything and um not everyone is prioritizing their looks or uh they're they're not all able to prioritize their talents and what whatever because they're actually having to like um provide for their family cook dinner um clean clothes um like feed their kids you know what i mean so i just want to like acknowledge how there's like reality and then there's a fantasy and not everyone is able to escape into that fantasy that 
some of us have the privilege of doing. So shout out to the people who set the paths before us so that we can do what we want to do now. But again, it's not like a thing that everyone can just do easily. It does take effort and sometimes like um, in order to have the energy to put in that effort, like you got to like um, have a lot of privileges and a lot of like uh, backing from your family and support and everything. You cannot just like if, if you have a stressful home upbringing or whatever, like I do believe that you can like make it and break the break the, the cycle. Um, but sometimes people that are handed things on a silver platter, they're more likely to be entertainers or whatever because they have the privilege to like, oh, get their beauty sleep and whatnot. Um, but yeah. So anyway, there was another thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, NPC, main character, beauty. Oh, so my grandma did tell me, uh, she would tell us this uh, when we were younger, that she did have a photographer that was named Sammy. And I just wanted to say shout out to Sammy. Uh, I don't know, like, I don't know him personally, but I do want to shout him out on the vlog. Um, and like, she would always tell us stories very fondly of him. And... Uh, you know, something that might be kind of like sad or depressing, but it's actually kind of interesting is that um, when my grandma had gotten a surgery in like 2018, um, she thought that we were in a beauty salon. And uh, we were like, no, we're actually, you know, we're not in a beauty salon. But um, it made me really like, in hindsight, it is actually very sweet or uplifting to think that like, um, we were not in a beauty salon. We were there in the hospital to visit her. But even at a point where you could say like a low, low, low point, she was able to fantasize being in a in a point that that made her happy. So um, that kind of like means a lot to me. You know what I mean? I see a friend. So I'm going to talk to you guys later. But yeah, I'm going to go to the union. I'm not going home right now. F no, it's too hot. Honestly, I don't know if it's temperature is actually that hot. But yeah, I'm going to just chill vibes today. Stay on campus. You know, my family worked way too hard over a sustained period of time for jobs that didn't pay them nearly enough um, for me to be that girl. So I got to uphold that. Um, I'm going to go work out after all. I'm not going to go to the union. Um going to go put in the work boo because we got to... So I got my nice little humble workout done. Um, I didn't do too much. I didn't do the most. I just did um, chest presses, uh, chin-ups. Um, I did very little. Literally, last time I did chin-ups with the um, like my hands facing forward, I did like five and I was shaking hard. And today I did seven or eight with my hands facing inward. Um, and I wasn't shaking hard, but the thing is, like, uh, I need to, like, ramp up my conditioning gradually and not just, like, all of a sudden go and expect to um, work out, like, how I used to when I was doing, like, consistent workouts every day, all day, every day, you know what I mean? Slow and steady wins the race, and we want to do this for decades, not days. So I really want to persist in my workouts and gradually inclining, um, like, the amount of, like, workouts that I'm doing and, like, the volume and... Um, like the amount amount of numbers, the amount of reps that we're doing should increase over time and the weight should increase over time. So I'm taking it kind of easy today um, and I'm done with my workout. Hey! Voice over Brandon here, audio redacted. <laughs> LOL. Okay, I'll see you later. In another day you'll come out in the vlog. Be safe. Um... <laughs> Okay, no, why did they honk at him so dramatic? That is so dramatic. Oh, it's a friend of his. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, I gotta like gradually ramp up the amount of, of uh, reps that I do and the weight that I do. Honestly? Okay, talk to you guys later. Not me throwing in a behind the scenes featurette. Um, the lighting is so spotty here. That's why I found like a, that's why I've been finding little, little trees to like stand near for the shadows, like, uh, for it to like be consistent lighting. You know what I mean? Look, let me turn the camera around so you guys can see. 
Um, you see how the lighting is like quite inconsistent. I know we're quite overexposed as well. Um, anyway. Okay. Um, things happen for a reason, eh? Let me go to the union and, uh, I didn't want to go home. I didn't want to, like, get, like, what is it called? Um, what was I talking about? I didn't want to get, I didn't want to be in the heat for that long. And honestly, it's not that hot right this second, but wow, the trees look beautiful. Um, I think the reason why I feel that is because I'm over here chilling in the shade. And this looks amazing because... The grass is golden, so pretty. I mean, I know that that means the grass is dry, but no, to me, it's beautiful. Okay, toilet paper on the ground. We see you. Okay, toilet paper. Period. I don't know if y'all can see how beautiful and golden the grass is right now. Um, I don't know how it's like white balancing and whatnot. Because the screen on my side is quite dim because I don't have it on full on full power. I want to reserve battery, you know what I mean? So I can film more. But it's quite green over here in this area. Oops. And oops, I'm not even pointing at the right spot. This quite green. This area quite yellowish gold. Super beautiful though. Oh my gosh. You know what? Shout out to myself real quick. Shout out self pat on the back real quick and the reason why I say that is because you know a little bit earlier I was a little bit frustrated I don't know if if I showed that on the vlog or not um but I was a little bit frustrated about something or anxious about something and instead of uh you know being upset about it in a destructive way I said you know what let me go work out I said you know what so many people in my family were overlooked for a long 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 time and that's not to lie I don't want to lie because my grandpa was a working musician he's that guy and my grandma my grandmas they're both that woman to me but I don't think they got enough recognition by the people I don't think people understood and I don't think they needed it I think that they were fine with the recognition that their families gave them and the love that their families gave them. But they were overlooked way too long for me to continue like to be all right with that. So no, I am that girl. And that is because of them, because of the values and morals and principles that they instilled in me. But they were overlooked for way too long and now it's time for me to break that cycle and to be like, you know, you know, to flex. I was gonna say something else, but it's probably copyright infringement or trademark infringement. Okay, okay, overexposure. Dang, the lighting changed. Um, I was gonna say, yeah, I'm still not gonna say it because I don't wanna give any other YouTuber any clout, okay? So, uh, yeah. But anyway, um, now it's time for me to flex a little bit. Flex a little bit on the girls. I'm a Barbie girl. That is copyright. Uh, that is copywritten for sure. Okay. We're about to do a haul. And this is the thing. These products, look, I'm not bashing the university, but I am gonna say my opinion and my truth, and this doesn't make the university look bad. This is literally just like, I'm just telling you what things cost. Well, I can't even tell you what things cost because I don't even know what they cost in real life. Um, all I know is that it's pretty expensive. This little bag right here came out to, um, what, 12 bucks? What the hell? Um, this came out to $12, right? $12 and something cents. Um, and that, okay. Like, this water is like $3, right? Okay, fine. Great product. Um, I don't want to like put things on the, on the cushion. This product, $2.39. It's an excellent product. Um, garlic and vegetable, so good. I bought two of these, right? And then I bought another one, uh, called lemongrass and... Lemongrass and chili, excellent. The thing is, like, um, this one is not vegan. It has 
contains crustacean shellfish, and it says in parentheses, shrimp. Okay. Okay, but it's probably like the smallest amount ever. Um, and then this, these chips go hard. There is Zaps, sweet Creole onion, so delicious, right? And this was $12.39-ish, kind of like that. But here's the thing, I was gonna buy two other products. They were literally $5.39 each for like some bean, like vegetable bean, I don't know what the F. I was gonna pay $24, girl. So this literally, it seems like it's a cakewalk. It's affordable at this point, right? But I just want to tell you, like, that is very expensive. I'm not saying that they're not good products. They're probably excellent products, but I don't know how much they cost at the store. I don't know if they're kind of the same. They're kind of, like, bougie. But honestly, I don't expect for a product to be that much. Maybe $3 or something. But $5.39 each package, I'm like, girl, look, they didn't even have, like, they didn't even have a price marking, you know what I mean, in general. So like, how am I supposed to know how much it costs? It doesn't have a price marking. Like not everything has a price marking. Some of them um, you have to like, you know, surprise, like you go to the register and it costs a certain amount. Again, I'm not bashing the university. I am entitled to my opinion 100%. And my opinion is that, you know, it is expensive and I understand that there's a convenience to it. And maybe if I were just buying that one product, okay, then I'll pay that fee. Like, you know, it's a convenience um, that we have this, right? But honestly, from what I recall, and I want, I want to Google this with y'all on camera. I, I want to Google it with y'all on camera. So sorry if I'm wasting you guys' time um, to be doing this, but what is it called? Thai Kitchen. I, I, need to I need to tell you guys the real price. Thai Kitchen. Because the chips, I don't think they're a price gouge that much. Um, thai Kitchen, rice noodles. Um, let me see how much these effing cost. Little package. Little package. Little package, bro. Little noodles. Okay, okay. Um, pack of... No! I, I want to find like the actual... like tiny little package i might have to go to instacart do i have the instacart app no 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 perfect i have the walmart app right here let's check walmart let's check her out right now um thai kitchen thai kitchen rice noodles the little packets um they sell them in bulk where are the single the solo ones. Um, I guess I can't find it. I guess I can't find it. And that would be unfair to like give you guys like the bulk order ones. You know what? What if I'm defeated? And what if I'm wrong? And um, that's not bad to be wrong. What if it really costs that much in store? I mean, I really don't know. Um, but anyway, <laughs> potentially, I don't know but potentially these products are being price gouged or they're really good products and they really cost this much. Um, all I know is that, um, all I know is that $24, girl, that's out of budget right now. That's literally DoorDash, that's literally Instacart, that's literally um, some type of luxury item at this point, some type of luxury grocery shopping experience at this point. Devoured. So good. Cinder boy is that boy. So let's go see him. Let's go see him right now. We should do this thing where if you want infinite riches, you like, infinite riches and bad bitches, you go ahead and you leave money. You go ahead and you leave money under Cinderboy. I'm thinking $100. That's our starting bid. No, honestly, everyone is welcome. It could be as little as a penny. It could be $1, right? Um, don't be stingy with Cinderboy. Um, but leave $100. You know, a gentle, humble $100. And... If, if you want, you could give more and leave it under Cinder Boy. And every night, the Cinder Boy Fairy, the Cinder Block Fairy, no, 
the bank cinder no the cinder bank ferry will collect the funds and use it for i don't know something nice and um i i will not take the money um but you should start leaving money under cinder boy honestly i wouldn't rob cinder boy like that i would i would protect him and i wouldn't take his money like that because it's his at the end of the day unless it's for something good then i'll spend it you know i'll spend it right in his name um imagine if we did that like something like that like for real like instead i'm not joking anymore like imagine i didn't spend the money on me we like did good deeds with the money left under cinder boy that would be interesting i'm not saying to do it all i'm saying is if you want eternal financial wealth um infinite finance uh gains you might want to leave a little money near cinder boy and if it goes um somewhere it might go into my pockets uh just know that we're using it for good things chipotle um we should actually do good things with it you know anyway i'm saying it like people are gonna leave money imagine hey could happen you know Last year, I used to walk the Bronx Trail and listen um, while listening to the book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. You know, the sprinklers are on, so I don't think I'm going to walk that way. But I would listen to um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And, yeah. Yo, these colors are giving autumn vibes, bro. It's like slightly cloudy out in the distance. It's like this the clouds are very slightly gray. I'm like almost looking at the sun like trying to see how cloudy the sky is because it's like mostly clear and there's like a look, let me show you guys. Okay. This is my outfit for today the pink shorts the pink shirt if we get closer to me you'll see a little bit of glitter this is autumn vibes let's get a little zoom in here okay let's get a little less zoom in here 24 millimeters right there. Oh my gosh, that would be a cute thumbnail. Oh wow, it blends really well. It looks really nice with the, this kind of kind of grass. And the wind is coming in and then the water sprinklers behind me. Can we see them from here? It adds like a misty smell, like a good smell to the to the air. Autumn vibes. I keep looking at the viewfinder. Ah. Hello. Oh my god, I'm so shy. Hi. <laughs> uh, what? Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're a copycat. LMAO. <laughs> I was a copycat. I started taking pictures of the mushroom because you were. 